Okay, so I think I am live. Um, I'm hoping so. Anyway, I'm just going to see if I can check on my... Yes, I am. Good. Let me just turn that down. Oops. Um, I think I'm live anyway. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, Check on my oh yeah, you can. You can hear me. That's fine. Let's turn my... Oh, who's this now? Okay, so, <clears throat> hi everybody. Um, hope you're all okay. Um, today we are going to be drawing um, this eye. Now, I've done it quite small because um, I want to kind of get quite a lot done today. So this is sort of the, the size that you would have if you were doing a commission rather than doing a massive, huge eye. Um, so um, let me just have a tweak around a bit with the camera just so I can get in there. I think that's okay there. Let me just check on the focus of that. Yeah, I think that's all right. Um, so we've got this eye. You've got the image up in the top hand corner. I hope everybody's okay. Um, I've had a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a stressful, a stressful sort of twenty minutes before the live stream because um, a, a bird or a, me and Vinny or Vinny and I heard a bird in the fire and nobody else could hear it and I kept on saying to the children there's definitely a bird in the fire and they're saying no there isn't and we tried to um we tried to get the bird out of the fire and we opened it up and there wasn't a bird there and then I was just getting ready for my live stream and lo and behold um we have a bird in the fire <laughs> and so my son came down opened. oh no my daughter went and opened the door and this bird just hopped out so she ran out screaming I ran out screaming we got my son in um, managed to open some windows from the outside because they weren't shut from when we'd prepared before and um, luckily the bird shot out of the window so <laughs> I've shut all of the windows um, the, the the fire is now uh, shut and um, yes I'm hoping to have a, um, a, a a nice live stream without any birds flapping around so I hope everybody's okay <laughs> I'm all right now um, so we're going to be looking at this eye okay so it is quite small um but we wouldn't we wouldn't get through or we wouldn't get an awful lot done on a on a big eye um, and this is a sort of the sort of size you'd get on a commission maybe even a little bit bigger than on a commission um so i'm going to make a start um and we are going to make a start as usual with um i'm actually going to take out a little bit of this information because it's a bit annoying um i don't like to have a huge amount of information when i'm when I'm doing a, a piece, I like to sort of take out quite quite a bit of the information and then put it in by eye. Now this is white pastel matte board that I'm using here. Um, so it might look a little bit grainy uh, on the um, on the screen. But um, if you've got any questions or anything like that, as per usual, you know, just ask away. Um, now I'm working on pastel matte, so it might be a little bit weird for me to begin with because I've been working on smooth paper. Um, but we'll see how we get on. So what I like to do when I do um, eyes is I like to do the outside bits first because it gives me an idea of size, it gives me an idea of form, it um, it just gives me a, a better idea really of, uh, of what it is that's going on. And I also find that if I do the inside, the inside bit can end up looking like a very strange shape. So, um, and it can, it can look out of context really with what I'm trying to do. So I tend to do the outside first. So I'm just using very, very light pressure. Um, and I'm just coming sort of down and round and just, just basically kind of getting the form of that eye in um, nice and gently. Now um, I've got my outline down here. You can see it's a very rough outline and it's, um, uh, I've projected this onto the pastel mat uh, and I've just taken about two minutes just to do a very rough idea of where all the little bits and pieces are just because it's quicker to do it that way. Um, but 
I can't be, I can't go with the outline that I've got. I can't kind of um, rely on the outline uh, that it's right because it generally isn't right. Um, you know, I, I have to be really, really careful and make sure that I follow my, um, my reference photo as well. And one of the biggest downfalls, I think, when you create the outline, however you create the outline, but one of the biggest down, uh, downfalls when you have an outline, whether you've done it freehand, whether you've done it trace, whether you've projected it. Oh, you're very, it's hard to hear me, is it? Is anybody else having um, issues with sound? No. Okay. Oh, I think Judith, um, unfortunately, I think my sound is okay, but I think you can't hear me. M um, nothing's changed. My, my microphone's set on really, really high. Um, no, it can hear you perfectly. Okay, that's fine. I won't worry about the sound then. Unfortunately, sound can be affected if your internet's not that great as well. Um, which is a problem, but the, unfortunately there's nothing I can do about that really. So I've turned it up a little bit. Uh, right, so, yes, yeah, so you've got to be really, really careful when you're working with any sort of an outline, whether it's been done freehand or not. Um, it's, um, sometimes you can rely on the outline and you can get into sort of like a bit of trouble if you pick up on a wrong, on a wrong uh, line or something like that. Um, you know, and very often I've done that, uh, you know, I'll pick up on a wrong line and I'll make an eye bigger than it is or smaller than it is or, you know, and you've just got to be really, really careful that you, um, you know, that you, that you do really don't rely on your outline being correct. So I'm just, this is the dark sepia I'm using here and it's the, the polychromos dark sepia and it's a pencil that I use all of the time for when I'm creating uh, portraits it's usually the first pencil I pick up um, it's the dark sepia so it's the polychromos dark sepia this is always the first pencil I pick up when I'm doing a portrait because it's usually the eyes that I start with um, and it's always this kind of thing that I start with so I'm just using very 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 gentle soft strokes I'm not building the um I'm not putting the really dark colours in just yet. I'm kind of building on the tone, but I'm, I'm making them very light. So I want to get everything in um, to begin with. Um, and then I can build the layers in there. I can make them darker as I go round. Now, horses' eyes are funny things. The eyelashes kind of come from all different areas. And, and every horse's eye is made differently. So you've got the top eyelid here. And some horses, the eyelashes tend to come from sort of like the top. Other horses, they kind of come from the, the bottom. Some horses have their eyelashes even sort of like coming from the um, the top of the eyelid up here as well. So you've got to be quite careful about where they're coming from. And having looked at this photo um, before, when I was kind of thinking about colours and all of that type of thing, my thoughts were eyelashes. When, where do I put them in? When do I put them in? And how do I put them in? And that's one of the things that um you know that I kind of look at when I'm when I'm looking at a piece and deciding what I'm going to do with what paper and all of that type of stuff and um, that's one of the things that I really think about and for me these eyelashes they're quite dark so I would tend to pretty much ignore the eyelashes for quite a long time and put them in once I've layered in over the eye because they're if I start to put them in now I'd then be tempted to draw around them um, and I don't want to be drawing around them because they have to kind of be very subtle in over the top of the other layers. So, um, uh, you know, the, the eyelashes are going to be put in pretty much, you know, not last thing, but once the eye has got some nice layers and everything in there. Uh, so I'm just going to come around here. Again, just bringing in a little bit of that colour in there. The dark sepia is great because, um, especially with a horse's eye, the outside area of a horse tends to be quite dark. So the dark sepia is a really good colour to use. And we're just going to come around. 
and then we've got this sort of dark area here and you'll see as well that my pencil is not sharp um, you know it's quite it is quite blunt actually um, I find that if I use it on pastel mat if I'm using a sharp pencil it can actually um, indent the paper if I'm not careful and then you end up with a mark um, you know and that's not something that I want and I know this looks a bit sort of fuzzy and unclear at the moment but we can sharpen that up as we go along and we've got quite a lot of white in here as well so I'm just gonna sort of quite rough with what I'm doing it's quite um, quite sketchy and I'll probably bring a little bit of black in just to sort of um, darken bits up a bit and sharpen bits up <clears throat> okay so just coming down here again you know if I need to take bits out I can just lift bits with my putty eraser my um, pressure is very light so I'm just going to bring my putty eraser in down here and just bringing that in there so yeah it's quite funny drawing on the pastel mat when I've been drawing on um, on smooth paper. Let's grab a cup of tea. Hang on. <coughs> because the uh, the techniques are so very different. You know, um, I, I I'm using very very sharp. I'll show you the sharpness. And this I've been using for quite a while. This is the. <clears throat> That black there, I've been using it even sharper than that. Um, and this is the blunter um, dark sepia. So I've been using that on the smooth paper. And I can show you that a little bit later as well, actually, the, the dog that I'm using on, the, that I'm drawing on the smooth paper. But it is, um, it is a very different way of drawing on the smooth paper to, um, to drawing on the pastel mat. You're still layering and everything, but, um, you know, you do have to be quite conscious of keeping relatively sharp pencils <clears throat> so I'm just going to darken this bit up here a little bit just going to add a little bit of dark in there now if we think this eye is probably maybe an inch and a half across so it's not very big at all and I'm just going to bring in a little bit of texture in here as well and what's lovely about the pastel mat is that um, for something like this where you have got texture as in texture in the skin, you can let the texture of the paper show through your pencil um, and it works really, really nicely. The camera will pick up kind of more of that texture than there actually is, but um, you know, it does work really well. So I'm going to bring the black in in a minute, which is very sharp, um, and we'll just start to kind of sharpen up those edgy bits because it's just looking a bit sort of soft and fluffy at the minute. <clears throat> which is fine I'm you know I'm, I'm happy with that but um, you can see this is quite sharp I don't want to use really hard pressure um, and actually you don't need hard pressure on the pastel mat to get a good sort of crisp um, quite quite uh, dark uh, color if I was doing this on the um, on the smooth paper I'd need to use quite hard pressure to be able to get the um, the density of the colour that I want, and the other thing as well to remember is that you know you're working on sort of quite a small area, um, trying to get the majority of the details in, but don't don't get all het up about you know you haven't got this line in, and you haven't got that line in, and you haven't got this exactly the same as what it is on the photo. It doesn't matter. As long as the eye is has the character and it's got the look and feel of, of the horse, it doesn't matter if you leave like a little bit of a highlight out. It, it really doesn't matter. Um, right, so I'm just going to come in down here. Add a bit of dark in there. I can just take away some of the highlight. Oops, let's just get rid of that. Um just come back down here again so it is a little bit soft and fluffy to begin with and it will only start to sharpen up once you've got a few layers in and I think that can be a real um, frustration for for people especially those who 
you know, are used to using sort of like a smoother paper because it's all looking a bit grainy and a bit like you're drawing with a with a poker, um, you know, and it's it, it does it does get smoother. It does get, um, you know, you can get the intricate details in uh, once you've once you've kind of got a few layers down. So I'm just going to come in here with the black again, still very, very light pressure. And I'm going to come up here and just get that idea of the top of that eye in there as well. That's all good. Um, I've had a go with the Holbein, um, Holbein, Holbein uh, uh, pencils. I have had a go when I was in America last year, but I don't, ha I was going to buy a set and then I thought, well, I'm not sure that I would use them, to be honest, and I wouldn't be able to use them in tutorials because not many people have got them. Um, so I didn't bother, but I have heard some really good things about them. Um but uh, no, I, ha I haven't got a set, but I did have a bit of a play and I know they have some absolutely gorgeous colours. Okay, so let's just come down here a little bit more. Just need to get this in there. Let's take out this bit. And this is the thing when you're working on sort of like a commission or something like that and the, um, you know, the area is really quite small. Um, that's it can be quite tricky, uh, you know, even with the sharpest pencils, they don't go in with tiny, tiny lines. And it's, uh, you know, it's kind of about how you how re you react to that and how you work with it. And, um, you know, so I'm just using the black here just to gently pull that in along here. And then I just need this bit here. And there we go. It's a bit rounder there, I think. We go round there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of that. Um, do you like to zoom in reference picture on specific? Yeah, so I, I um, well, it depends what I'm working on. I'm just going to put a little bit of this sky blue in that corner there. And I'm just going to bring a little bit of the sky blue into here as well. Um, I, I have to be very careful not to um, kind of go too, um, zoom too far in. Because you can you can go a little bit mad with your details then. Um, I do tend to sort of zoom in so that I can see um, see specific details. But at the minute, I've got the whole eye on the screen, so all I can see is the whole eye, um, you know, and that's um, that's fine for me. That I don't need it any um, any bigger really. And the other thing as well is, you know, it's about being able to um, translate something that you're looking at on screen. And the thing that I'm looking at on screen, the size of the eye is that big. So I've got to take the details from something that big down to that big and I have to be able to kind of do that as I'm drawing, um, you know, so it's sometimes it's quite good to have a printout and I would have a printout here, but my printer's run out of ink. Um, so it's quite good to have a printout so you can actually sort of like double double check sizing and all of that type of thing. Um, so, uh, you know, but it, but yeah, I tend to work with my reference photos on my ipad and it's qu and it is quite big but you do you do kind of get used to it you do get used to sort of like um translating something that's much much bigger to something that's much much smaller okay so i'm just going to come in here obviously this is much lighter than what it should be but we're just sort of plotting plotting color at the moment okay right so now that I've got sort of some of that area around the outside of the eye, which isn't, you know, it's not not amazing by any stretch of the imagination. It's not it's not absolutely, um, uh, you know, spot on and, and fantastic. But, um, you know, it's giving us some sort of a, um, an idea of the form and how the eye and everything is, is working. Um, and then the next thing that I do is I, I usually take my dark indigo. So the polychromos dark indigo. I tend to use only polychromos for eyes. Um, and I think it's because 
um, they are a little bit more translucent uh, than the other sort of more waxier, stickier pencils. Um, they tend to be more... I don't know, when you layer over the top of them, you can see the layers underneath a little bit more. And that's what I really like for doing for doing eyes. So I always come in and I do the pupil next. Um, and anybody who knows horses knows that horses' pupils are um, oblong. So they're not round, they're oblong. They're like a sheep's um, pupil. Um, and that this pupil will stay horizontal to the ground wherever the horse's eye is so if the horse's head is up in the air um, the eye swivels round and the pupil is horizontal to the ground and you've got to you've got to really remember that when you're drawing horses because um, if you it, you know if you don't draw it horizontal to the ground it looks weird it looks odd um, and I just bring in the pupil area very 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 lightly now, another quick tip when you're drawing horses, if you've got a photograph um, and it's and it looks OK on the photo, but when you translate it to a drawing, it doesn't look OK. If you've got a photograph where the lighting in the eye makes it look like the pupil is round, um, change it because horsey people will look at it and know that it's wrong. Um, and even though it's even though it might look round on the photograph, as soon as you translate it to a drawing, it's going to look wrong. So if you can see any semblance of the pupil, uh, you know, in your photograph, and it doesn't look sort of horizontal like this in an oblong shape, then you kind of have to just tweak it a little bit. And all you need to do is just sort of um, give it a little bit of a, a, a darker area where you think this horizontal pupil might be. And that's all you have to do. Uh, you know, and it's so, so important to get that um, that shaping correct because, you know, that's that's what horse's eye looks like, um, you know. So there we go. We've got sort of like the pupil just sort of uh, placed in there. Um, and then what I'm going to do next is, so I'm going to look at the eye and I'm going to think, right, OK, what colours can I see? What colours can I see underlying in this eye? And I see in this area here in the corner... I'm seeing some of this burnt ochre. I'm seeing some. Um, I'm seeing some burnt sienna. I'm seeing quite a bit of. Whatever it is, quite a bit of walnut brown. Um, in there, but there's all sorts of different colours, and we've also got some really nice, like highlighted bits coming in here and up on the top here. Um, and wh what I like to do is I just like to start to plot the colour very, very gently. And I know we haven't got a huge amount of space, um, you know, because it's not a huge eye. But I just like to sort of bring the colour in very, very gently. So this is the burnt ochre that I'm just bringing in in this corner area here. And if you think about pastel mat and how many layers pastel mat can take, this is just like layer one. I'm not... I'm not going to be putting like three million layers in. That's not something I'm going to be doing. But there are going to be quite a few layers in here. Um, and then I'm going to, I'm just going to bring in a little bit of this just in places really. And sometimes it's just a good idea just to put colour in because, you know, it can be a bit scary, you know, when you're starting an eye like this, uh, trying to work out where, where things go. And with pastel mat, it's so forgiving that even if you put a colour down and you don't like it, you can just layer over the top of it. But the reason I'm going in with the um, the burnt ochre here is because if you've got the photo reference and you blow it up, you can see a very, very light layer. of sort of, It's like a, a low light in the bottom of the eye down here, and it is like an orangey colour. So if I get that in first, it means that I can show that um, later on. I can kind of leave the colour out when I start to bring the brownie colours in. Um, and, um, you know, we can get that nice sort of light highlight coming in there. And then I'm going to kind of skirt round this highlighty bit here. Um, and then just bring in a little bit of this orangey colour up here too. Now you'll hear quite a lot about um, coloured pencil drawings going through that ugly stage. And they, and they do go through an ugly stage. And there's not a huge amount you can do about it. I try to make mine look as, as pretty as I possibly can. 
um but you will get you will get a time where you're thinking oh god i'm not sure this is working and you know i might have to start this again but if you're working on something like pastel mat honestly keep going because it's so forgiving you can put loads of layers over the top if it's not working properly uh, you know and um, and it will it will work out in the end and actually all of the times where you put something in you think oh no that's not quite right and you layer over the top of it all it's doing is it's just adding to your piece so um oh hi sue you've been um been playing with your new puppy oh and she's called summer oh how lovely oh my little um, my little Nellie's not quite so little anymore. She's the size of a small Labrador now. <laughs> At about, I think she's about 15 weeks, something like that, coming up to 16 weeks, I think she is. Um, and she's the size of a small Labrador, but she's absolutely gorgeous. We just adore her. She's such a darling. And she, oh my God, she loves her walks. <laughs> so we're not taking her for very long walks because she's, she's a big dog, so she can't have um, huge walks. But um, she goes for sort of like a, a 10, 15 minute walk in, in the morning uh, with the other big dogs. So I'm, I'm there with these three blooming dogs and the, the other two are very good, actually. And um, but she loves going on the verges. I take her up the lane and um, she charges through all of the long grass in the verges. And she's like leaping around and throwing herself in and rolling. Around. She's so funny. So, of course, all we've got is mud in our garden at the minute. Um, but oh, she's just a, a delight. So I'm, I'm, um, I'm thrilled that you've got a new puppy, Sue. Um, just got some Clairefontaine. Okay, Cheryl. So you need the side that feels rough. That's that's the side that you need to use. The rough side. Uh, right. Okay. So we've got some um, burnt ochre in there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in some of the burnt sienna. Um, and I'm just going to kind of start to add a little bit more in in places where I can see something a little bit darker. The burnt sienna and the burnt ochre are amazing for eyes because you get that really lovely sort of um, that lovely deep rich orange. They do work very, very nicely. So I'm just going to bring my putty eraser in and just kind of come over the top of that blue area that I put in. Um, and just bring in a little tiny bit of a highlight. Hopefully I'm not completely obliterating the... Um, and I'm just going to bring in that little highlighty bit there as well. So the, the polychromos are brilliant um, as a first... Well, for, for eyes in general anyway. Um, but they're also great on the pastel mat because you can lift off the colour very gently with the putty eraser and it just lifts off. I find with the... Um, I find with the luminance pencils, um, they're not as easy to lift off with a putty eraser. They tend to kind of go down and, and want to stay put, whereas the polychromos are pretty good at kind of, um, you know, being able to be lifted off. Um, you know, they work quite nicely. So this is the Burnt Sienna. Again, it's not particularly sharp. Um, and I'm just going to kind of come in over the top. I'm using these little very, very, very soft my pressure um if i just show you pressure on here this is this is just a sheet of um fabriano here but if i just show you my pressure so if i if i go for the lightest this is going to feel different to the pastel mat but if i go for the lightest i can possibly get to get pigment on the paper that is the that's the lightness and then of course you can kind of go darker 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 and then you're kind of really, really pushing down on the paper there. So we're looking at this end of the scale. In the beginning, on pastel mat, that's what we're looking at. We're looking at that lovely, lovely light pressure. And on pastel mat, on the uh, Fabriano, on a smooth paper, you do this, you hardly get anything. On the pastel mat, you get you get more like that. You get tons. Um, what type of sharpener do I use? Oh, I use... Um, I use the swordfish curve and what I do is I take the little end bit out and then I can get some, in fact I've got, oh I don't know where my other one's gone, it's got, that's got, they've got really, really super, super, super long sharp points. These actually have been used so these aren't, these are blunt compared to what I was using before. They were like up here, <laughs> just like, oh my god, they're sharp. Um, but it's the swordfish curve that I'm using and it's, um, it works, you know, I think it's my favourite sharpener, it's really good. Um, 
are you going to use the Aquarol white to blend between the layers? No, I'm not. So if I was using, um, if I was drawing, say, an, a pale coloured eye, so a green eye or a blue eye or something like that, I might use something like the Aquarel uh, white in between. But with horse eyes and dog eyes that are sort of this brownie colour, I don't tend to burnish at all. What I will do is I'll bring in, say, um, a, a warm grey two, and I'll gently sort of smooth everything and blend everything with the warm grey two. But I, if I wouldn't use the aquarelle. If I was drawing this on smooth paper, I may. That that's something that I might do. I might then use the aquarelle, or I might use a prisma or a white luminance, or even like a cream luminance, you know, to um to sort of burnish everything and sort of smudge everything together but on the pastel mat I don't now we've got quite a lot of like little funny little um, reflections and stuff going on here which I'm going to do a semblance of I'm not going to go in depth and kind of get all of that there's, there's a person and there's trees and there's all sorts of stuff so I don't really need to do that um, and then I'm just going to come around here again we just need to be quite careful about where our um, highlight is here so you can see oh, I've got a bit of a shadow going on here as well so you know it's just it and this is where it's like looks a little bit ugly you know as we're just sort of plotting that color in it can look a little bit uh, but you just have to have faith and you just have to keep going um, you know and I, I that, that's what I like about the pastel mat you know you, you can just sort of plot all of this colour in and and then go in and start creating details and stuff like that and it allows you to do that very very easily and I have to say with the smooth paper I'm, I'm doing pretty similar techniques in that I'm kind of getting all of the tonal values and all of that type of stuff in and then getting my details in um, and I am really really enjoying using the smooth paper as well and I've been, I was uh, testing the new light fast paper, um, which is absolutely gorgeous. It's really, really nice paper. Incredibly expensive, but really nice paper. Um, so I need, to, I think I need to do a drawing on that and kind of, um, you know, really get to grips with how that works. But it's, um, it's a, it's a sort of a creamy white. It's not a bright white, and it's got a bit of a. Not really a texture on it but it's got quite a lot of tooth but it's very very nice um why do you prefer white paper as opposed to any tone paper uh, melinda i do like tone paper and i've used tone paper quite a bit actually um i use the um i use the pastel matte dark gray i guess um i don't know I quite like the feel of the 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 pastel matte i must admit but uh, but i think i probably need to do some more tutorials on the on the darker um, the darker paper sort of like the, the, the dark gray I'm not with the with the um, uh, pastel mat I'm not overly keen on the other colors the dark colors in the pastel mat I like the dark gray and I like the white and that's kind of about it really um, so what I've got here is I've got the warm gray too and I'm just going to come in and not burnish but I'm just going to sort of um, come in over the top of the those two layers the burnt sienna and the burnt the burnt ochre and i'm just going to bring that warm gray in very 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 gently over the top and what it will do is and i'm using oops i'm using that pressure so i'm still using really 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 light pressure i'm not pushing down on there at all and you can sharpen it if you like, if you want to. Um, and um, and I'm all I'm doing is just coming in over the top of the um, the colours here, and just gently smoothing and blending those together, so that we start to get a little bit of a smoother surface. I'm going to bring in a little bit over that blue as well, and then I'm going to start to darken this area up as well. So just very gently down here. 
Now the thing, the white pastel mat board is fabulous to draw on, but if you go too hard with your pressure, it will, your colours will smear uh, and they'll go like a, a bit muddy. So you've got to be very, very careful with your pressure. So you can see here that you kind of, the putting the grey over the top doesn't change the colour, but it just kind of knocks it back a little bit, doesn't make it as vibrant. Um, Oh, right, yeah, the toughest thing is leaving highlights not coloured. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And of course, with the pastel mat, it's great because you don't need you don't need all of those um, highlights to be, um, you know, kept free. But with a white paper, a, a smooth paper, you do, you really do. Um, Bonnie, do you ever do portraits? Uh, do you know I have? I have done some. Um, I did a friend's three children. Uh, and really, really enjoyed doing them, I have to say. I really did enjoy doing them. And I was going to start offering human portraits, but they just don't have the same pull. They don't have the same excitement as doing a, an animal, um, you know. And I, I, I just absolutely love drawing animals. So I decided that I was not going to draw humans. I'm just going to stick to um, animals. But you never know. You never know. I might have a... I might have a bit of a, a play with drawing a human. Um, you know, I mean, once you kind of get to know your pencils anyway, uh, I think the reason that people get really good at what they do is because they're really passionate about it. You know, so I think with animals, I'm so passionate about drawing them and I, and I love my animals that I think that's kind of one of the things that's helped me develop, you know, that, that passion for them. Um, you know, don't quite have that for humans. <laughs> Um, but, uh, you know, not for the drawing of them anyway. OK, so we've got that coming in there. And then you can see in if you've got the reference photo, you can see that there are all sorts of other things going on in there, which we can bring in, um, you know, at a later date. Uh, absolutely loving Megan's. Oh, thank you so much, Laura. Oh, I, I am. Oh, well, I'll show you a little bit later. I am absolutely loving drawing that portrait. Um, I'm so fickle. I, every single portrait I do, I fall in love with. Um, I'm really, really enjoying drawing on the smooth paper. I have to say, um, how am I go? How am I coping doing all grey fur again? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I'm well. I'm using a lot of black. Um, you know, which some people might frown on, but I'm using a lot of black, <laughs> a lot of black and a lot of blue. Um, but it's more about getting the hair, the hair texture, and those sort of. Um, those shapes and everything. So this is the walnut brown. Okay, so this is a this is a good it's a good brown. Uh, the walnut browns a it's a good neutral brown. Um, you know, good for good for eyes and all of that type of stuff. And all I'm doing is I'm just bringing it in very very lightly, in kind of in over the top of what I've done here. Now because I've got a few layers in already, and because I've kind of smoothed it, the the surface of my paper is now or well, the surface of the pencil is now really quite smooth so what I can do is I can start to vary my pressure a little bit so where we were kind of going like with this pressure at first everything was this pressure I can now go right I'm going to go really light and then oh do you know what there's a little bit here that's a bit darker so I'm just going to vary my pressure a little bit and then I'm going to go back to light and then oh I've just got another little dark bit there so all of the time I'm thinking about once I've got a few layers down, what's my pressure going to be like? Because um, I think I've made the mistake of sort of suggesting to people that they need to use light pressure and kind of didn't give them any more information about that. So, you know, yes, we have to use light pressure, but not all the way through the drawing. If you use light pressure all the way through the drawing, you're going to get a very lovely, soft, fuzzy drawing. Um, you've got to then start to practice using a, a varied pressure so where you need to have darker pressure you need to be able to then kind of come in and and start to to vary that a little bit um, and especially with this eye here there's a top bit up here which i'll bring a bit of blue in there again i think over the top of that um, but it's like a it's like either buildings or a or a wall or something like that and it's just a tad darker so we need to be able to uh, represent that but also you know there's areas kind of here that's maybe there's maybe a little bit darker up here then it goes lighter again then it goes much lighter down here so being able to vary your pressure as your pencil is constantly on the surface is a really good idea um ba -da -ba -ba. found polydraw on amazon 
expensive. Oh, right, okay, Cheryl, that's good. The, so the graphics is fine, the graphics is good. Um, Bob from a street cat called... Oh, that sounds interesting, Eileen, that sounds really interesting. Which smooth paper am I using at the moment? I'm using the uh, um, Hannah Muller Nostalgia, but I'm toying, <laughs> she says. Um, Got to be very careful what I say here. I'm toying with using the Bristol plate. Dun, dun, dun. Um, which is like an ice rink. <laughs> that's that's how I would describe it. It is the ice rink of, of paper. Um, it's a very, very, very smooth paper. And I am toying with, with trying um, something on the Bristol plate, which is interesting, isn't it? Um, because actually I'm, I'm quite enjoying using diff all sorts of different papers at the minute. And I never thought I would. I always, I always kind of shied away really from, um, trying to, you know, use different papers, but, um, I'm, I'm quite enjoying having a play with all sorts of different things. I'm not sure I'm going to end up going with sort of sanded papers. I've got some, I've got some in here and I think, oh yeah, I have actually, I did some, um, I did a, like a, a, a testing paper thing the other day and I've got some sort of like sanded papers here. Oh, God, that feels horrible. But that's the Sennelier. Um, oh, no, that's Art Spectrum Colour Fix original, um, which is like a sanded. And then this is the Sennelier, I think. Yeah, this is the Sennelier pastel card, which is like a, um, you know, a rough, oops, a rough past, uh, sandpapery type um, paper. And then what's that one? Oh, that's UART. That's the UART. Actually, I think that might be quite nice. I think that's the 800. Yeah, the 800. I think that might be quite nice, actually, the UART. Might be quite nice. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I've been having a, having a bit of a play with pencils, and I did sort of like a, a live stream, um, you know, showing sort of like how the pencils work, uh, the paper works and everything. So I'm, um, yeah, I'm thinking maybe, maybe have a bit of a play with something a lot smoother. Um Ba -ba. Esky, uh, send them to my email. Um, I think I did put that on my on on my reply to you on um, thing, but my email is bonnie.snowden at gmail.com. Bonnie with a Y, Snowden with a, an O N at the end. Um, that would be really really nice. I'd love. To, in fact, I've had quite a few people ask me about doing a tutorial on um, with a with a husky or something. So um, you know that would be really really nice. Talk about the pressure is golden nugget. Oh, that's a, it's a pleasure, Mirko. Honestly, um, the pressure, I think, is so important. It's so important to understand um, about pressure and how you can change it, you know. Um, and, and I think I think that's... I don't think people realise how important pressure is when using pencils. Um so let's just have a look down here. So we've got sort of like quite a lot of this dark brown coming in here. This is the walnut brown. Let me just move that into there. I'm going to bring a little bit into there. And then I want to bring some of the um, Caput Morton Violet in and also some terracotta just to kind of give it a little bit of an extra glow. And I mean, an eye like this, you can be on an eye like this for sort of a couple of hours, you know. Let's just bring in a little bit more. Now that we've, when you're looking at highlights, it's very easy to think a highlight is white because it's light. Actually, these highlights are far from white. They are quite orangey, actually. Um, but if you put these in orangey from the beginning, they would have looked really odd. But now that I can, I can just gently bring those in a little bit in there. I'm going to look a bit better and then we can start to darken in there. So I'm going to bring the um, light touch so important. I saw someone use blue tack on pastel mat to erase. It's brilliant. Yeah, Helen, just watch the blue tack because um, it's oil based. Uh, I was talking to my framer about it and blue tack is a framer's worst enemy. It will it will eat through the paper um, given chance, you know, sort of like that, that the oil and everything. So I would recommend that you don't use blue tack. Um, I know it does a great job, but you can kind of damage the paper a little bit. 
and I'd also say when you're using your putty razor to change them on a regular basis because obviously if you're kneading them you get the oil from the hand in there as well so you know you've, you've got to be quite careful um, you know with um, with what you're using on your on your um, surface so I'm just darkening that off a little bit and even though I'm bringing a little bit of black in there and making it darker I can still go in and lighten it up if I need to Um, difference between Bristol plate and Bristol smooth. Um, I'm not sure, Carol. I know the plate is the 500 series, so I don't know whether the Bristol smooth is um, sort of like one of the one of the lesser grades, if you like. It could be, but the plate is very, 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 very smooth. Right. So this is the terracotta now. So this is the. Um, uh, polychromos terrac terracotta and I'm just going to bring some of this in onto this cornery edge up here as well um, and I'm going to bring some of this into here and what you'll find even though I've got the dark brown in here if I bring a little bit of this terracotta in over the top of the brown you're still going to be able to see it um, you know and you're still going to actually be able to see the orange kind of coming through and that's what I mean about the the polychromos. They're 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 sort of translucent, so you can see through the layers, and they work so nicely. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to sharpen my warm grey too, and then I can come in and just make some sort of like smaller um, kind of areas of highlight in there. So I've got my um, this is the it dark indigo. The dark indigo works brilliantly with the walnut brown and you can make like a really, really, really rich brown using the dark indigo with the walnut brown. And I can just start to pull in here some of these darker shadows in here. And like I say, with me, it's not about creating a, an absolute replica of a photograph. It's about creating a semblance. It's about creating sort of like the, the, the life and the character and everything that's in um, whatever it is that you're drawing. So I'm, I'm never sort of thinking, oh, I've got to get that. I m must get that in and I must get that in because some of the details are like so tiny. It's nigh on impossible to, um, you know, to be able to include them. And I'm just going to go dark indigo in here and just kind of darken this cornery bit off here. Again, very, very important to kind of look at your uh, darks and lights. Make sure that your dark areas are dark. Do, do, do. I love Bristol Smooth. Not sure what Bristol Plate is. It's, 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 the, it's the 500 series. Um, yes, holding your pencil further back from the tip uh, helps with the pressure. I tend to hold mine always quite close to the end. Because it means, even if I'm using the lightest of pressure, it means that I've got total and utter control over my pencil. And because I have no control over anything else in my life, being able to have control over my pencil is really important. <laughs> so, um, you know, I tend to sort of like hold it really close to the end so that I can control everything about it. Okay, so I'm just coming through here. I can hear Vinny throwing himself at the door trying to come in. And then I'm just going to darken up this area here as well. If you're finding that your eyes aren't looking particularly realistic or you're kind of worrying about how they're looking, um, you know, always look at the shadows. Always make sure that your shadows are actually shadowy. Um, because it could be that you're not getting your shadowy areas dark enough. You know, so um, that's something that you can you can have a look at quite quite quickly. Right, I'm just going to sharpen, and actually I might use although I've got one a um, a cold grey one. It's a cold grey one there. Right, I've got a cold grey one, and I'm just going to sharpen this one. you can see how sharp that now has gone 
and that's the swordfish curve that I'm using and I've taken the little end out so I'm getting some really 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 super sharp pencils that one is that's that's usually sharp for me um, but you can see how sharp that is um, and then I can just come in with the warm grey the sharp warm grey and I can start to actually bring in some really quite nice lighting details in over the top of the colour that I've got down and this is what I absolutely love about pastel matte. Now, I'm again, I'm using this pressure. Where's my pencil? Oh, my paper's gone. My paper's gone AWOL. It was dropped on the floor. I'm using super, super, super light pressure. Um, you know, I'm not burnishing, not doing anything like that. I'm just using very, very light pressure. And it's just picking up, dropping that pigment on the top there. Um, and then I can get these really nice sort of little highlighty bits in there that work so nicely probably get a little bit blue in there and then down here as well um you know and you can kind of go forever you know you can layer and layer and layer forever in a day with pastel matte it's um i don't think i've ever I, well there's been times where i have not been able to layer at all but that's kind of maybe been after about six layers and I think there's been a, an issue with the surface of the paper. But usually you you kind of can keep, if you wanted to, you could just keep going. Um, you know, it, it's it's that sort of surface where you can just you can just keep layering. Um, you know, obviously, if you've got a really heavy hand, then it's going to make a difference and it's going to look all look a little bit smeary anyway. But um you know, it's uh, it, it's such a great surface for being able to get all of those layers and everything on. Right, so we need to get a bit of vibrance in here as well. So I'm going to bring my... Oh, sorry, Lynn. <laughs> what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to use uh, papers that people, other people actually use or that people can get a hold of quite easily because I know that not everybody loves pastel matte. So I know, and I know that not everybody can get hold of pa the pastel matte board um you know and it's very frustrating for people if they're wanting to do a, a tutorial and they're all on pastel matte because you know as much as you can kind of translate it to a smoother paper it's still a little bit frustrating so i was just wanting to make sure that i can i can create tutorials that um you know are are, are suitable for anybody to do really and lots of people like using smooth paper so, um, but yeah, I apologise about that. I am a bit of an enabler. This is the, sorry, this is the Caput Morton Violet that I'm using here. This is another one of my uh, favourite pencils. Um, we learn so much when we see you work on these. Oh, thank you, Darlene. And Darlene, honestly, I am blown away with your um, horse eye that you sent me today. It's absolutely fantastic. Really, really, really beautiful work. I've done um I've done a an eye like this uh, on my Patreon. It's for it's. I did it as a beginner's tutorial, but not it not to create a a piece that's got any less depth to it. Um or details. It's still highly detailed, but I go into major, 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 um details with information and everything about um. You know, if you're completely new to coloured pencils um, and Darlene's not new to coloured pencils, but she's done one of the tutorials that this horse eye tutorial and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's just in fact, you know, all of the pieces that I've seen, they're just they're just amazing. Um, you know, I, I, oh, I love seeing what people do. It's, um, you know, br it's just brilliant. And I get them through on email and it just makes me really happy. Um going to try rice paper oh sounds interesting <laughs> um you could draw on a napkin oh thank you i'm not sure i could draw on a napkin but thank you i do do a lot of doodling on envelopes and stuff like that uh right so let's keep need to get a little bit more light in here i'm going to use my um my cold gray now in fact i could do with a bit of a you almost do with a creamy colour, really. Let's go with the warm grey again. Just lift out some of those areas there. And then, and this is what I mean about it going, you can kind of hit these stages where it's like, oh, we're not sure this is working really, but you've just got to kind of stay with it because it, it will, it will work. 
I might just bring in some of that blue on the top there. So start to bring a bit of that colour in there. So I'm going to go with the uh, sky blue. Um, uh, random question. Before you have management, how did you organise your pet portrait schedule? I'm finding mine is all over the place at the moment. It's stressing me out. Laura. Right, okay. So I'm a really, really disorganised person. Like so disorganized you wouldn't believe um and i think that's why i love my color pencil because it's because i've got utter control over what i'm doing but um what i do is i've got a spreadsheet and it's um i'm just gonna put this little bit of a highlight in here and it's split into months so uh, i've got tabs running along the bottom and it's got m months in there and my current spreadsheet runs to I think it's July 2022 and I know that I can fit in well depending on what I've got going on in each month I can either have no portraits in there or up to four portraits in there say and I used to I used to have eight portraits a month that I used to do but then I wasn't teaching and I wasn't doing tutorials and stuff I was literally just doing portraits but I've kind of reduced that now and um, what I do is I just when I get a deposit through so I'll never add anything to my diary unless I've got a deposit um, I will add name email address um, you know what it is size all of that type of thing this is the museum aquarelle that I'm just about to use now and I am gonna not burnish but I'm going to use this over the top of the blue just to sort of smooth that out and what it will do is it'll just bring that blue down into this area here as well and just give it a little bit of a little bit of a color um, and um, and that's how I manage mine um, you know somebody gives me a deposit I then let them know when they can expect to receive their portrait and people will people will wait and what I tend to do is I tend to close my commission books so that you know I've got so so many that I have booked in and then I close them um, and then that's it they're closed um, and then I can reopen them again but I've got a subscription list so people can subscribe to my um to have a you know to have a commission done and then what I can do is when I then reopen my books I can then just email everybody on my list and that works really well for me um you know and it means that I can kind of have have control over um you know the whole of a year say so that I can work out everything else that I'm doing but I would just say a simple spreadsheet is a really good way to go um, you know, don't don't make it complicated. Just a, a spreadsheet, or if you're a visual person, maybe a sort of a, you know, a, a something on your wall, um, you know, anything like that. But something that, that that's going to work for you. All right, so I'm just going to come around here, darken that off a little bit. I can hear, I can hear my daughter shouting at Vinny. I think he's um, being a little bit disruptive. Okay, and then I'm just going to bring a little bit of this tree up in here as well. Like I say, I don't have to, I don't, is it a tree? I'm not sure what it is actually. But I don't have to put, put loads of detail and I can just kind of do a, a, a random vague shape. You know, it doesn't have to be massively detailed. And then I'm just going to use the black just to darken up in there as well. And around here. So we're starting to get some nice colour in here. And then what we can then do is we can start to actually bring in some of those. And those are the scary bits, the eyelashes. And that's what I tend to do. I leave things right for the last minute. I'm like, oh, it'll be all right. Well, you know, it'll be right. It'll work fine. And then I'm like, oh, crikey, I've got to put all of the eyelashes in now. So I'm just going to put a little bit of that sky blue in there. And you can see the blue, the blue colour coming in as well. Need to darken that off, but got that um, dark indigo in there. Into here. 
Um, let's have a look. How do you know which colour combinations to use? Does it come from? Um, yes, it comes from experience. I used to work in the print industry, so I kind of know how colours mix and, and what happens. I think it's important um, to kind of, I'm not a very technical person. And um, I've got my colour wheel and everything like that. And I always think, oh, I'll sit down and learn about colour theory and all of that type of stuff. And I just get completely bored by it all. I just I just don't it just doesn't really interest me. Um, so I, I kind of I know what colours when you mix colours, I know what happens. You know, so blue and green, uh, blue and yellow make green, um, you know, all of that type of thing. And I think the more you do with your pencils, the more you kind of realise what what happens. So if I put a if I put a cap at mortem and a dark indigo down and then I put some walnut brown in over the top of that that's going to give me in the most amazing chocolate brown um you know like a really really rich chocolatey color uh which would be fantastic for sort of like a dark bay maybe a um a chocolate labrador that that type of thing so I know that those color, color combinations work incredibly well I know that using um a lilac color in over the top of an orange works brilliantly because um the the lilac the, the purpley lilac-y color is a complementary color to the orange so i know that that works really really well i know that if i'm drawing something green you know dark green or something like on a bird's feather i know that something like a um a dark red in a shadow is going to look amazing because again it's a complementary color so i think it's i think it's kind of knowing your colors but also knowing what your pencils will do as well, you know, and I think that kind of comes with experience and just playing around with your colours, you know, it's like this, this eye here, I've, I've kind of got a process going, you know, that I use for eyes and I know that this colour, this colour and this colour all work really, really well for eyes. So I, I tend to sort of use those um, all of the time, uh, you know, so um, I'm just going to bring in, actually, I'm going to bring in a little bit of the cinnamon now into the bottom bit here. This is that this is the cinnamon, the pinky brownie colour. Um why is Bristol ply? Oh, so the two ply two ply is basically the um the thickness, I think I'm right in saying. Um so if you get something that's four ply, it means it's like um it's like toilet paper. You know, when you get something, you get the really luxury toilet paper and it's like two ply or three ply or whatever, it means that there's there's that sheets of it together um you know so and that's so a four ply paper is much thicker than a than a two ply basically that's 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 all it is i might be talking complete and utter rubbish there um but i think that's right because <laughs> of course i'm an expert on everything <laughs> especially toilet paper um but yeah i think that's what it is um I've been looking everywhere for a tutorial on a German Shepherd with coloured pencils. Colin Bradley's one is pastel. Could you do one, please, please, please? I can, but I think, I think, um, I think Leontine has one, Linda. I think Leontine van Vliet, a Dutch artist. I think she has a, um, I think she has a, a tutorial on a, on a German Shepherd. But yes, I think a German Shepherd would be really nice because you've got all of those colour combinations and everything in there, um, you know they um and all of the hair as well you know it's that it's that hairiness isn't it that you kind of need to get in there so i'm just going to bring a little bit more of the burnt sienna in there i think um do, do, do. will you be using a new dark indigo in place of the black or dark and the black um oh hang on a second uh, Bonnie, how do you choose between warm and cold greys? Well, it's it depends on what I see. So I use the warm grey too an awful lot because of how it reacts with other pencils. So that is um that's more to do with uh, the reaction that I get from a warm grey too rather than the colour that I get. So I find it's a very very good pencil for smoothing out other colours underneath. So I'll use that to kind of really, really help with how the colours underneath are working for smoothing and all of that type of thing. Um, I'll use a cold grey. So I've got a cold grey here. You can see, hopefully see the difference if I show these here. Um, you can see the difference there. This one's quite yellowy 
and this one's quite bluey. This that's cold grey one, and that's that's a warm grey too. Um, so if I see anything that's kind of got um, bluey colours or you know very sort of cool white colours, then a cold grey is going to work really nice, or the cold grey one's going to work really nicely. So up here in the eye, it's going to work really really nicely there for sort of smoothing out as well and not darkening it too much. I need to put some darker colour in there. Um, and then I can also bring it in over the top of other colours as well. The cold grey works really nicely over the top of other colours to kind of just um, lighten stuff up a little bit. But you have to be really, really careful um, with the the cold grey sort of three, four, five, that you're not using it over the top of um, sort of the orangey colours because that's almost like your yellow, yellow and blue making green. You, and you may end up with sort of like a bit of sludge coming in on there. So you've just got to be a little bit careful. Um, but I can just come into these little areas here. And these are tiny, tiny areas. But um, just to add a little bit of something in there. And this is the cold grey one that I'm using here. Let's put a little bit there. All right. And then um, I can use a bit more of this pink in here. This is the cinnamon. And this is another really good pencil for smoothing. And I'm just going to bring a little bit in there as well. Okay. And then I need to start to darken the top of that eye up here. And of course, we've got all of those eyelashes and everything in. So I think we probably need to bring those eyelashes in, um, you know, before we um, before we do anything. Or before we finish at least but I'm just going to bring the dark indigo in on the top here it's really dark in here and I don't want to bring too much you know come down too far because it, the dark indigo is quite a dark blue whereas the sky that we've got here is sort of more ultramarine -y. And then I've got a little bit of the ultramarine here as well, actually, which I can bring in. It's a bit of a darker, brighter, a little bit of a hair there as well. That's attractive. Um, a bit of a, uh, a brighter blue that I can just bring into the top of that. And there. <laughs> I can hear poor Maisie. She's getting very, very cross with Vincent. He's so, he's terrible at being, you know... If I'm in the house, he just wants to be with me. He's, he's a bit of a nightmare, actually. All right, so I'm just going to come back in again over here with the black there. And then I think what we need to do is just be really, really brave and start to bring some of, the, um, some of those eyelashes in. bit like whiskers that you've got to kind of put your brave pants on and go for it just bring a little bit more of that up there the more layers you put in the more uh, detail you can then get in over the top let's just get a little bit i'm going to use my white here and it's not very sharp but i should be able to get sort of like a little bit of a a smudge in there this is quite dark down here as well um, oh, will I be using the new dark indigo in place of the black or darken the black? Um, no, not on the not on this one. I don't think. Um, I have been using it a lot in in Megan's portrait, which I I will show you in a in a minute. I'll kind of talk you through some of the the colours and stuff that I've been doing on that one. But um, no, on this one, I'll I'll probably just keep it. Um, that's not looking so bad, is it? Right, are we going to be brave? Blimey. Am I feeling brave? Right, where is my dark, dark sepia? Right, okay, so let's just answer some more questions before I do anything else. <laughs> Bonnie, which pencils would you say are best to use on graphics film? Oh, Helen, um, um, any of them. But if you're going to use Lightfast, use Lightfast on their own, uh, I would say, because um, I don't think Lightfast mix very well with other colours on film. My, you know, I'd prefer to just use them on their own. But um, if you were going to use any of the other colours, they I think they work brilliantly. Illuminance is just 
gorgeous. I, oh my god, I'm just in love with luminance at the minute. Um, I'm just toying with whether I should be sharpening this. I think I need to sharpen my dark sepia. Sharpen it. So just hang on, just a second. These are like um, they're like they're like knives. They're that sharp. <laughs> Might have gone a bit too sharp, I think. Um, is that why I like? I think so, Karen. I love. I have no control at all over anything, and my dogs are completely out of control. <laughs> um, right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be really really brave, and I'm gonna start to kind of pull in some of these. Um, I'm gonna be really quiet now. <laughs> I'm going to start to pull in some of these, uh, uh, what are they called? Eyelashes. And the reason I'm doing them at the end or near the end is because if we put them right in at the beginning, the, you would you would really, really um, want to draw around them. And nobody wants to see that, um, you know, drawing around an eyelash. It's just not going to, it's not going to be very attractive. Um, so just kind of pulling them in over the top for me is an easier way of um I, said, I can't get over how sharp these pencils are can you i don't think i've ever used pencils these sharp <laughs> i have to be careful i'll be i'll be um i'll be damaging myself um so and, and really quite nice and lightly and what we can do is we can then once we've got these eyelashes in we can then come back and sort of um you know enhance some of them if you want to and this is the point where i've kind of been you know um wittering on about different bits and pieces and and in the back of my head there's bonnie you need to put the eyelashes in you've already said that they need to go in at the end and there's a reason for that and that it's going to work and if it doesn't work you're just going to have to blame you know you're going to have to go offline and say there's been a technical error and really sorry <laughs> um but actually they've worked quite nicely so i think my my idea of putting them in at the end i think was a was a was a good a good call um, and well, I have faith in myself. I knew it was going to work. Um, yeah, just blind faith. That's what I've got. <laughs> Somebody's got to have faith in me. Um, so I'm just going to come down there like that. And then the eyelashes kind of come out to the side a little bit as well. That looks all right, actually, doesn't it? I just think I've surprised myself. <laughs> kind of coming. Don't, oh, I mustn't get carried away now and put tons in and ruin it. That's another thing as well. Um, everybody has different ideas on when you should stop. For me, if it looks okay, stop. <laughs> Don't keep going, um, because you know you can you can overwork something. And I always think, quite a lot of the time, less is more. You know, if you can just get as much information in there for it to look okay, stop um that's my motto um let's have a look do, 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 do. cheryl that's all you need all you need is is requests from your friends and family and then what will happen is you'll end up with um referrals and somebody will see a picture on your on your sister your brother your mother your you know son or daughter or whatever's wall and they'll ask for one that's all you need you know that's how i started mine um you know and just and all, all i'd say is just be really really proud of what you do always be proud um thank you janice um um thank you on my oh oh that's fine that's fine maz um was that the was that the um the ginger one maz because i saw a really lovely ginger like a ginger tabby cat today um i have to admit i've i've been uh, like crazily busy with all sorts of different things um and i haven't really been going through my facebook that much um and um i've kind of did a little bit of facebooking today and sort of commented on a few things and this oh blown away with some of the um some of the art that's going on at the minute really really am right so i'm just going to come in here a little bit what time are we on right um this bottom bit's a bit rubbish isn't it but hey ho i think this this middle bit is looking all right actually i'm 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 okay with that um thank you thank you cheryl 
Oh, oh, Jackie. Your husband actually said to me that it was good and I said that it was all that. Oh, you're so kind. But Jackie, you're, I, I mean, I've seen your work in person anyway and your work's lovely. So, um, you know, I think I think tutorials, I think tutorials obviously are, are a help. You know, they're, they're great. But I think people um, don't realise how how tricky it is following a tutorial. You know, I mean, if you follow some of the stuff that I do, you know that I witter on a lot and you know that I've got so much stuff going on in my head. And then I'm kind of telling you what to do. You've then got to kind of process all of that and then kind of try and do as I'm saying to you know down on the paper so it's it's very tricky doing a tutorial I think um okay so I'm not sure I'm going to do much more on this I think it's looking um I think it's looking okay I mean obviously if I was doing if I was doing a, a portrait now what I would now do is I'd start to kind of build up around the eye a little bit so I'd start to bring in let's just get a warm gray four I just start to bring in um, some of the um, the tones and everything on on the top of the eye, uh, you know, just to kind of get a good idea of how the eye's working and all of that type of thing. And then once I've sort of worked around the eye and got that looking okay and got a look like a little bit of the hair around it, I then I then move to the top uh, left, which would on a horse like this it would be the one of the ears. Um, or it could even be um, the base of the neck, you know, if it's a if it's a horse with sort of like a, you know, it's got its neck in there. Um, so I, I'd always do the eye first and then I would go to doing um, uh, top or very far left over to very far right. And that's how I kind of work all my portraits because I kind of work in sections. I can work... Um, in layers and kind of dotting around and everything but my my brain works better if um if i work in sections this is the dark sepia again i'm just kind of pulling in here and just getting a little bit more context in for this eye it, i always like to leave something so it looks quite nice that probably sounds a bit a bit silly really but um you know i i like to if i'm if i'm stopping for the night i want to get to a point where I'm happy with where I've got to, um, you know, if I've, if I've got, and this doesn't always work for people because sometimes a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, advice is to step away and, and walk away and then go back. But I always find that if I've got to a point where actually it's not working particularly well, I'm actually better sticking with it and working through it and then leaving it once I've got to the point it's, it's looking okay. Um, so this is kind of the, Bit of the eye, eye, eye lashy bit there. Um, have you chosen the future to? Oh, Melinda, it's the elephant. I think. I think you guys chose it for me. Um, and and all I can think of as I'm drawing Megan's portrait is, I need to draw that elephant, <laughs> and I need to start drawing it soon. Um, and I, I've got going on in my head. How am I going to do all of those wrinkles? <laughs> I might do a really small one. I might do it this size, like pocket-sized elephant. That would be a good one, wouldn't it? And then I think I'm going to do um, I'm going to do some white white fur for the um, the focus tutorial uh, on smooth paper. So I think that'd be quite good. So um, right, okay. Well, I I think this is looking okay. This eye, um, and hopefully you've kind of seen it going through stages of it looking pretty pretty shoddy. And then kind of coming through at the other at the other end, and it's starting to actually look quite nice. Um, it's going to darken up this little bit here as well, you know. And you just got to have faith that things are gonna gonna come right, and they're gonna they're gonna work okay. Um, oh, that's really kind, Cheryl. Thank you. I've always used Polly's, but today a friend recommended Color Soft. Oh yeah, no, I like Color Soft. I had some Color Soft. I'm, I must admit, I do quite like a, um, I do quite like a, a, a hard pencil, but the Color Softs are, um, they're they're nice pencils. Well, Susan, I have got the most incredible. I've got two amazing references of Lions that I am, I'm allowed to use, um, and I just need to find time to do them they are 
incredible photographs um you know so i i really really do want to do those but i'm i'm not sure when it's when um yeah that yes people keep on saying an african wild dog i'm not i yes i think i probably would but i i don't feel a huge passion for them to be honest i don't look at them and, and go oh i'd love to draw one but you know maybe i maybe i should anyway um you know i i i do maybe that's maybe that's something that i need to kind of push not always drawing stuff that i'm i really love um you know but we'll see um a couple of online art stores have passed away blah 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 that's okay thanks michael um oh gosh lots um oh god i'm sorry yeah i've got all the granite rose i do apologize <laughs> Ah, uh, well, there you go, you see, Michael, so it would last longer. So you've got the two-ply instead of the three-ply, and it's, yeah, it's not great. Um, right, okay, so. Um, oh, gosh, loads loads of questions. Bonnie, I'm going to send you lots of puppies. Oh, that would be amazing, Esky, thank you. Um, I can remember when Bonnie first joined the UK, but I didn't renew my membership due to the pins and leaves. Oh, no, that's a shame, Michael. Um of your streams and special updates how on how my brain is working yeah my very odd brain um brilliant okay so what i'm going to do now is hopefully that's been quite useful that eye it's looking all right on the screen actually i've got <laughs> i'm quite pleased with that um and i um I, I, hopefully you will want to see um, um the lovely megan oops so I might just have to just be careful. Just move my iPad out of the way. I'm just going to have to make sure she's not going to jump off my thing and just um, make sure she's uh, focused in there. So this is the lovely, um, this is the lovely Megan. Oh, thanks, Jackie. What do you mean? What do you mean when you said you removed the small bit on your pencil sharpener? Oh, um, I don't know where it is. On the, on the, um, hang on, let me see if I can find it. I don't want to, I'm not sure where I put it. Oh, it's there. Okay, so this is the I've got to be very careful this is the swordfish curve here and the this bit here is the crank and there's this little bit here that, that there goes Megan off my drawing board this little bit here screws into the back and that is what makes your pencils either you know the different sharpness and if you take it all the way out it doesn't your sharpener doesn't know when to stop so it just keeps going and you end up with a really, really, really sharp pencil. <laughs> um, so that's what I mean. It's this little, this little device here. So um, yeah, and then yeah. So this is this is Megan, um, and she's on the Hannah Muller, uh smooth paper, and it is a very smooth paper. It has got a bit of a texture to it, but it is very smooth. Um, and I've just kind of been working in a very different way to how I would work on pastel mat and a little bit how I was working on little flick last week as well, actually. Um, you know, it's all about with with this particular piece, it's all about the texture of the fur. It's all about getting the markings in. It's all about getting the softness. And what happens is when you first start to put the pencil work in, it can look a little bit harsh and it can look a little bit not not particularly nice um, and you just got to keep working at it um, you know so these dark bits here these are really really dark areas so I've got blues in there I've got the I've got I think I've got um, I've got polychromos in there I've got um, the new luminance dark indigo and I've got luminance black in there uh, you know, so there's 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 quite a lot of there is quite a lot of colour that goes into there, but the um, the the poly black actually has been a, a really really great pencil for this, um, 
And it's, you know, you kind of just have to put the marks in and then work them. So something like this, where I've kind of got to get sort of like those little um, areas of hair, it's very slow going, um, you know, and you've just got to, you've just got to, you've just got to keep going. The eyes, I have to say, the eyes, when I first started doing the eyes, because they, because they don't, this paper doesn't work like pastel mat, I, 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 I kind of was struggling a little bit and I was like, oh God, these are looking really flat. They were looking quite lifeless. Um, and I just had to bring in some of these little tiny highlighty bits in here and actually darken everything up rather than trying to kind of knock them, knock them back. Um, but, uh, you know, they, they, yeah. Uh, you know they've worked out really quite well actually these eyes um so it's it's yeah how do I do the white fur um well I haven't done any yet <laughs> it was a bit on top of the head um basically I've used some warm gray cold gray in there uh some blacks and blues um oh I'll tell you which else is a really great one for let's see if I can see it find it actually I'm not sure whether it's here my um Oh, blimey. Where is it? Oh, I don't know if I can find it. I don't know, it always goes... It's the one pencil that goes... Oh, no, it's here. It's the... Um, the the fossil grey. The light fast fossil grey. This is just fabulous for sort of like these warmer bits in the white fur. Really, really nice. Um, you know, so when I get down to sort of like the um, the bottom of the chesty bit, it's all going to be about shapes. So this bit here, this is sort of like a little bit of white fur that I'm doing here. And it's just all about shapes. And then when I come to kind of bring the, um, the, the black in, this is a bit that I'm working on at the minute. When I come to kind of bring the, the black into here, um, I kind of go upwards and move the black upwards so that the white fur and the black fur connects. So you've got that lovely sort of feeling that it's all sort of um, either layered over each other or it goes from one colour to another. And it's just about, you've just got to be really careful and really gentle with it and just go really slowly. And that's, you can't really see on there because I've got that silly logo in the way, but that's that's kind of um, what I've been doing. Just Just slow and steady. Um, you know, really looking at my reference photo, trying to kind of um, replicate some of the, you know, how the hair is, is working and all of that type of stuff. So, you know, it's, um, yeah, that's that's kind of how I'm... Um, Bonnie, are there any caps in your email address? No, there aren't, no. Um, yeah, so, so that's kind of... Um, yeah, yeah, it is. It's re it is really tricky where you get the white for hitting the black, and actually, what's what's very, um, what's very easy to do is to kind of get those sort of like it's almost like you've got fingers pointing into the black, and they all look a little bit chunky. But all it is is just practice, you know. It's just practice and working out how fur works, and that's 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 all you have to do. It's just practice. So um, yeah, so uh, I hope this has been a a. a you know a, a useful hour and a bit um we've got the lovely um oh we've missed oh, i can't you can't see that there because it's gone down a little bit but uh yeah we've got the lovely megan here so um you know i hope that was useful for you um and i'm gonna do a I'm going to do a tutorial on the on the white fur on her actually on on the bottom of her that will be up on patreon and then if you wanted just pull this down a little bit so you can actually see the eye you can see how small it is um but if you wanted to do um an eye um you know a bigger eye in like loads and loads of detail and have like you know so much information about how we're doing things why we're doing things all of that type of thing um you know then i've got, i have got that on my patreon it's and it's only five dollars I'm saying it's only five dollars. I know some people can't afford, you know, that, and, and I understand that. But um, you know, it, it is on the on the five dollar tier, and you get that, and you get all of my other um, tutorials as well. But this one in particular is a beginner one, and uh, the the uh, results of what people have, or the the results I've seen from people who have created this, who are very new to color pencil, have been absolutely amazing. They've been amazing. You know, so if you are thinking or oh, quite fancy, you know, um, you know, doing something, doing something like that, or you're thinking, oh, gosh, no, I'm really new to colour pencil. I'm not sure I'd be able to do it. Um, have a go, honestly, because you'd be surprised. And I talk you through everything, um, you know. So, um, yeah. So I hope that's been useful. 
and um, hopefully I will see you next week. I'll have to have a think about what we can do next week. But um, thanks everybody for joining me and have a, a lovely rest of your evening and um, I'll see you next week. See you later.